everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Erica and I make videos all about making and selling candles. And in today's video, we are going to be going over a topic that I get a lot. I get a lot of questions about this and I see it a lot in the DIY Facebook group that I'm a part of. And that's just people worried about wasting time, wasting money, wasting product when it comes to the testing process. Now, I wanted to talk about this video in hopes to inspire motivate make you guys feel not so bad about uh, wasting a ton of money and product when you are in the testing process that is also why I chose this part of my apartment to film today's video in because it's right next to all of my testing jars and as you can see I mean I have gone through so many different jars and just left the wax in here I think I counted close to 40 jars 40 jars that I have tested and used as testing jars and I had no idea how to properly go about the testing process. I wasted way too many jars and I thought that was the truth for the longest time. I really did consider it wasting until I really thought about it and I thought, did I waste or did I just learn what not to do next time? And yes, it's an expensive mistake because I bought all of these jars and all of the products and all of that and all of it's just kind of sitting here and you might be thinking why don't you just reuse the jars. These matte black jars can't really be reused whenever you try to get the wax out whether you are doing the heating method or the frozen method when you stick it in the freezer. It messes up the matte black coating on them so I've tried many different ways. I can't get it out without messing up the jars on the outside. But when it comes to spending money on testing during this whole process, which is going to be you learning, you experimenting, you trying things out, you're going to be using a lot of product, but yes, there are better ways to go about it, but I don't want you guys to get stuck in the mindset of, I need to make sure that I am only going to be using this much product, so I have to figure out the perfect candle at this point, or else I'm gonna be wasting too much money. And yes, it can be a long process, and yes, you need Need to implement patience time there's gonna be so much time there's gonna be so much patience that's needed you never would imagine that candle making would take so much patience but it does but you do need to implement those things in order to have a successful testing process and know that you will do whatever it takes you will be able to get the supplies you need and take the time it takes to get it right. There is no buy this amount of products and you will get the perfect handle after buying that amount of uh, that amount of supplies. It just doesn't work that way. You have to think about this time in the candle making process kind of like school. So with school, you're paying money, you're going, you're learning, um, you're being able to do hands on activities, um, you have to take tests, all that kind of stuff. Kind of like with testing when it comes to candle making, you're spending money, you're investing um, into yourself and into your business versus school is investing into your future um, education, career field, what have you. But when it comes to making candles, it's very similar. You have to think about it as I am using this money and I am learning in this process. And that is the key word is if you are learning from what you are doing, then you're doing everything right. If you have been testing out different wicks and you have been testing out three different kinds of waxes and you've been going kind of back and forth and you've been changing things up, every time you change something up, you learn from something that you did before. So you can't think of it as wasting money as much as I totally understand you guys feeling like it's wasting money and wasting product because trust me, I have felt that way with all of these jars and I still kind of do. I mean, I'm not perfect thinking that, oh, like I feel so great that I used up all of these 40 jars when it comes to testing when technically I probably could have figured everything out in about five jars or seven jars or whatever. I don't even know the perfect amount of jars you need. Um, but that's besides the point. Um, but yeah, that is definitely something that I think of as well and I totally understand when you guys feel that way, but please don't feel that way. Just know that you are investing into yourself and into your business. 
Something else I see kind of within the candle making community and with the questions that I get is a lot of people want to find the answers out before they ever test anything. Now, this is something that I wanted to know and I do fully understand, especially when you're just gaining a grasp of what are the basics of what you need to know. But when you want to know what exactly is gonna happen when I do this, what exactly is gonna happen when I do this, a lot of those answers can be answered for you by uh, testing at home. So that's something that I try to convey a lot when it comes to answering questions from people is that I will just say, you never know, just test it out and see. You know, the biggest ones being what happens if I mix these two fragrance oils together? What happens if I do this? You know, test it out and see and, and you know, find out if you like it, if, if it works for you. Because as I've noticed and as I've seen from different candle makers is that even if one thing works for you, it doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna work for somebody else. And that sounds so kind of crazy when it comes to candle making because if you're using the same supplies, the same fragrance oils, sometimes it might not work for you. Sometimes you may not like it and somebody else, they might think that that result is a good candle and somebody else might think that it's not a good candle. So it really is just trial and error and that is what I say. I think I've said the phrase trial and error in so many of my videos because it's so true. You just need to test it out for yourself and I understand wanting to get answers and wanting to be able to find the best and quickest way to a successful candle. You know, what type of wax do you use? What wicks do you use? What are your favorite fragrance oils? How much of the percentage of fragrance oil do you use and they will try to emulate that and sometimes if you take exactly what somebody else is doing and you try to do it it might not work you might not like it it might not be a good candle you never know so that's why when you are constantly testing that's how you're really gonna learn it's not necessarily like you're trying and you're testing out something and then you go and ask a question and you're trying to get you know well I didn't like 464 so I'm gonna try joy wax and I'm just gonna ask this person, you know, what do they do to get a good candle? Because, you know, they're selling a lot of candles, so I wanna know exactly what they do for their candle. I'm gonna emulate that, and then I still don't really like it. So I'm gonna, you know, move on. And it's more of the things of like, okay, well, why don't you like it? Try something else, try a different fragrance oil. Maybe your pouring temperature is too low, or, you know, whatever it is. So a lot of it is just trial and error, and I understand when, there's so much information out there. It's like information overload and you feel like you have all of these answers at your fingertips, but nothing's connecting together and you can't seem to make it work and it's so frustrating. And it seems like you have so much information and that can almost make you feel like you can't do anything. And I feel like that's a little bit of analysis paralysis. We have so much information on our uh, at our fingertips, books, YouTube videos, um, Facebook groups, just different articles online of how you should make candles, what you should do, what kind of wax to use. People do different pouring temperatures. I pour at this temperature. I add in fragrance oil at this temperature. So it's just really interesting to see how we're all different, we're all unique. We all do different things when it comes to candle making. There is no one perfect way to make candles. There really isn't. I mean, there's so many different variables and that's why I understand when we have so much information, it can feel like there's so much out there and obviously if everybody has all these things that are working for them, you're trying to find something that works for you, but yet you're trying to do what everybody else is doing and you feel like it's just not working. So I really wanted to make this video today. Um, I was kind of just inspired. I took some notes on what I wanted to talk about, but um, I get these questions a lot in my DMs and on uh, my Facebook messages, on my um, comments on YouTube, and I just wanted to let everybody know that you can do it, you can try it out. Don't be scared to waste money. Obviously, you know, if if you're on a budget, stick to your budget and everything, I totally get that. But just time and patience will help you be okay when it comes to wasting product. And I think that that's a lot of it, is that because if you were doing all this testing and within three weeks you had your formula and you had a candle that you really loved, you wouldn't really mind wasting all of that product because hey, it 
took you right to where you needed to be. But if it took you three months, four months, six months, a year, it's a little bit different. You start to get more antsy and more frustrated with what you're doing, and I totally get that. Um, but that is all I wanted to talk about in today's video. I hope this motivated some of you guys to um, start just being a little bit more free-spirited within the candle-making world and your own world. It is your candle making world it really is whatever you are doing it is your special thing that you are doing and you are working on the best formula and the best kind of wax and the best wick that is going to work well for you and definitely use youtube and facebook groups and everything as a tool and as a resource i have i have definitely asked the question hey what wick do you use for that diameter or hey you know what kind of wax are you using or whatever and it's helped me a lot and it's definitely brought me to where i am but the most successful that i have felt when it comes to actually creating a candle that i love has been a trial and error period and that is all I wanted to say in today's video. If you guys liked today's video, go ahead and leave it a thumbs up as well as subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Memory Box Candle Co. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys. By the way, I apologize in uh, my videos when my hair looks like this, it's just thrown up in a ponytail. I kind of have it on the side so it doesn't look like this when I'm talking because that's I don't know. I don't like that. I like to see some hair on the side. Um, and it's just because I ride a motorcycle, so my hair's in my helmet and it gets like greasy and messy and sometimes thrashed all over the place. So um, I apologize and I can't shower and wash it every day because my hair is already um, very fine and damaged. So I apologize, but that is the reason why.